Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. I hope you're doing very good indeed. Today we have the pleasure of having Trevor Trevor Dorkson, um, the CEO of ePlay Digital. Uh, great pleasure to have you, Trevor. And uh, you, I think Trevor is going to walk us through a presentation first of what ePlay Digital actually does and tell us more about the company. It's an exciting company, and then we can follow that up with a conversation and a Q&A. So a, a very warm welcome to you, Trevor. And we've been looking forward to having a chat with you. And it's good, great to have you. Thank you. That's, that's excellent. Do you want me to start right away, Sean? Yeah, let's yeah, so get into the presentation, the and we can presentation. go through the different things that you guys got going on. <clears throat> All right. So I am Trevor Dirksen, a CEO of ePlay Digital. ePlay has 11 different mobile games in the App Store with a marketing program for some of those that launched this month. Three of those games are our ES, capital E, capital S, or eSports lineup. And I'll summarize these ES and other titles here today, including what we call Holodeck, Howie Mandel's How We Go Viral, and Fan Freak. And I'll just keep continuing, but uh, if there's any uh, reason for interruption, just let me know. Yeah, we will do. In August, we announced a deal with the now NASDAQ-listed Versus Systems, and that technology is now ready and part of an upcoming marketing push. We've been ready of quite a few things for this marketing push. Um, some of those are related directly to pandemic. Other similar marketing deals have worked their way through technical trials and will be announced as those trials are completed. And even more coming with partners through podcasts, the upcoming Olympics, and other marketing advantages the, the company enjoys. Uh, one of the things the company uh, had to do during pandemic is it had to pull back on sports. Um, not all sports, but some of the sports titles that we were working on. Uh, you'll see one of the others that we did choose to work on, uh, what we call internally Holodeck. And we did pull back on commercialization around a game about germophobia for a well-known germaphobe during a pandemic, or at least being seen as uh, and trying to profit uh, during a pandemic. So just some sensitivities that were, were needed there. Um, and uh, that has all come very, very nicely now that vaccines have started. From the wacky mind of Howie changed. Mandel comes a new game called Howie Go Viral, where you chase around TV icon Howie Mandel in this new virtual world. Customize your avatar with all sorts of cool accessories. Collect lures to attract them and contagions to infect them. Download Howie Go Viral today. I kind of thought that video was going to, I forgot that video was going to play. So hopefully that played through fine uh, and you were able to hear it as well. It's a part of uh, Ad Creative for uh, the upcoming marketing campaign. For revenue, ePlay, just looking at the market, ePlay is initially focused on the $380 billion global mobile advertising, mobile game, and augmented reality verticals. So those are the, some of the, the, the middle bars in that chart. And on the left hand side of that chart are the fast growing sports gaming and esports verticals. They're shorter, but growing quickly. And we like those uh, as well for the company. ePlay has developed an augmented reality mobile gaming platform that requires no glasses. I sometimes feels necessary to say that it, it just needs a mobile phone. The first game was NBA. The second is how to go viral. And the third is what we internally call Holodeck. We've created award-winning games for Intel, ESPN, Sony Pictures, Cineplex, and others. We've created games that have been downloaded millions of times and for FIFA World Cup, uh, for sponsors such as Samsung, Ford, and Fiat. And now we're creating them for ourselves and our, and our partners and for our uh, end users. Just a little bit more about Big Shot. It's, the, it's a free game. It started with the NBA. It utilizes our award-winning existing IP that I mentioned earlier, and users buy level ups, skins, sneakers, and swaps. We have celebrities with tens of millions of followers on TV and social media built into the game. One of those is, is Robert, seven-time champion Robert Ory. He's on air in, in all the Lakers games. And the kind of the game experience, I found, I found LeBron James down by the school. Of course, that's no guarantee LeBron is still there. But that's all part of the fun. And you, you go looking for coins and uh, and uh, LeBron's performance on the court contributes to your performance in the game. So that's Big Shot Basketball. I won't talk about that uh, much more. We'll talk about our eSports or ES series uh, in, in addition to that. 
there are three of those games. So this would be the, the you know the, the fourth, and the marketing begins on those later this month. Of, of course, at this moment, we're not really doing a lot on big shot basketball for for marketing, just because the season's winding down and the pandemic year has really been impacting it. But the ES games are are uh, pandemic proof. Um, there are mini games. They allow people to compete head to head for prizes, including cash prizes. We have a ladder style basketball mini game called Swish. We have a match three viral droplets to please Howie game called Outbreak and an AR basketball title called Swish AR. These are our ES games. Users choose to compete for, let's say, a $10 prize. It could be different dollar amounts. The entry fee is for $10, is $6 per person. Only one person wins, the house takes the $2. Pretty simple math, easy to understand. That's our ES series of games, three so far. Now we are lucky to get to work with Howie Mandel, Rob Rory I mentioned, and others. And really with 11 games in market, with more to come, that's the next big catalyst for the company, marketing its products. And that's why you see us announcing deals with celebrities, traditional publishers, media, technology partners to, to really, I mean, really comes down to, to get downloads. That's, that's job number one. And in, in addition, build, to building great things, which we're, which we're doing as well. Um, Howie Mandel's game that we've built really came out of Big Shot NBA. Um, it came out of a, a walk pre-pandemic in Montreal with Howie talking about the types of things we could do together. Howie is known for America's Got Talent. He's also a, a big TikTok star. Lots of people know him for different things. And this game, Howie, uh, Howie Go Viral, is basically Pokemon Go meets TikTok. <clears throat> you collect lures and contagions in an effort to disease the world's most famous germaphobe. The initial marketing program for How I Go Viral started just, uh, just in the last few days, and we'll be able to share some phenomenal results as early as next week. We know they're phenomenal because we've already seen them. Uh, we're hoping to see that maintained and it wasn't a fluke or it was no, no issue in the data. Um, uh, we're, they're looking fantastic. And, and, and uh, Graham, if you like, we can do, our, uh, um, we can do that announcement here uh, next week. All right, so that's uh, Big Shot Basketball, RES Games, How I Go Viral. There's a new app with new partners, new revenue sources that will be officially announced soon. All we've talked about so far about this uh, new fitness app is that we call it Holodeck internally and that it's unlike any fitness app in the marketplace. Um, I think you know people can use their imagination about what ePlay is already known for with its 11 games in market and they wouldn't be wrong on where this might end, end up as, as a product and we're looking forward to revealing all. Um, I'll also say here today that it'll earn revenue through traditional mechanisms such as advertising in app purchases, but importantly, also through high dollar amount, you know, relative for apps anyway, registration fees. Um, and we hope um, some conversations are going on uh, very successfully so far. We hope they continue to announce a very special subscription content service partner in the coming weeks, which would add kind of an evergreen revenue in addition to um, advertising in app and, and registration fees, which are more, kind of more one off um, uh, per user base. Subscription fees, obviously, a holy grail. That's Holodeck. I, I really can't say much more about that because we haven't made much more public about that. I'm looking forward to doing so uh, soon. You'll be hearing about that. There's a, a ton of announcements related to that happening in the marketplace. More to come and the official name and all that uh, to be revealed as well. ePlay has been collaborating with those types of folks, celebrities, artists, musicians, um, NFT marketplaces, brands interested in the space, and, and others in the NFT world. We recently launched a, an NFT platform, and our location-based games and the fitness app allow us to drive like limited edition wearables in the game. So you have to wear sneakers in a game about fitness. Uh, you have to wear clothes in Howie's game. You have to wear um, sunglasses or backpacks or, or uh, uh, different items in Big Shot Basketball. So those are, those are digital wearables. They can match physical wearables uh, to the T if we like, if we're working with the brands. Um, and they can be free or can be paid for with in-app purchases, or they could be very, very precious in NFT marketplaces as limited edition items. So imagine Howie's game, one of the most precious things you could get in Howie's game is a hazmat suit. And, and we sell those hazmat suits in the in-app marketplace, but we also are working on, you guys are a hazmat suit, 
um, that it will be available as auction, a very limited edition item, something very, very special. And there's nothing keeping us from making that and if that that hazmat suit, those sneakers, whatever, that digital wearable um, available with our partners. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll keep revealing who these folks are over time um, uh, as a physical wearable as well. We're focused on the digital wearables. Some of our partners are focused on the physical wearables. It's a perfect uh, match, and we really like how that's going. Um, there's a really kind of sneak peek at, uh, at one of our avatars for our games, how it might work inside of um, our holodeck platform. So people can buy virtual real estate in these worlds, physical and virtual wearables I mentioned. We call it the Nifty Esports platform platform and it makes it possible to create display own wear market buy and sell nfts and of course you know digital wearables physical wearables all those other things i mentioned this space is amazing watch it um and i'm, I'm gonna go on to fan freak next but, but before i thought i'd dig into nfts just a little bit more just to kind of level set uh football nfl or uh robert Kukowski, the gronk uh, did well with his uh, NFT a few weeks ago, um, really well, uh, six to seven figures or six figures. And he doesn't own any of the IP he created. I thought that was kind of interesting, something to observe and kind of a get below the, the surface here. The NBA owns IP, but it sells a lot of it to Turner and, and TSN in Canada. And so the IP marketplace for sports is very, very complicated. You've got Gronko owns none, the NBA that owns lots but sells it. Um, and the nice thing with the gaming space is, is companies like ePlay, ePlay anyway, owns its IP. We have celebrity partners. We work with artists and programmers. And we're working on all those things I mentioned, the real estate, the digital wearables, the interactive media, augmented reality. So think hockey cards, but more. Mm -hmm. Some of these things you can hang on your wall or wear them if you like. Um, others carry big brands. Others are digital only. Um, and they're all interoperable with our games and others. And that's Nifty Esports. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, announcing drops and working with uh, brands that you'll recognize. So. Yeah. Yeah. So on to Fan Freak, and this is the final uh, really item here other than some wrap up on how we make money. It was put on hold during the pandemic, uh, as, as were some other sports titles. And we're developing Fan Freak to take advantage of liberalization happening in the sports gambling legislation in Canada and, and the U.S. So lots going on there, lots going on with Fan Freak. It's a lucrative and growing market it's expected by us and others to ex accelerate massively post-pandemic. And uh, Fan Freak is, is, is a casual game. It's accessible to all sports fans, including gamblers. Um, you'll notice how I emphasize that it's not just for gamblers. It's important to create a platform that doesn't crowd out the casual user and it's able to address problems, uh, these problems and, and, you know, gaps in the competitive marketplace. It's free and easy to play. It's a street game. And, uh, we, uh, we hope it addresses, it really is one of these accessible kinds of things that everybody can play. And like Holodeck and our other games, we include game mechanics that attract users to play every day. So it's easy for users to forget about apps on their phone. It's, it's, that's bad for our business. Um, and in Fan Freak, if you skip a day, it could cost you prize money. So lots of incentive with Fan Freak, with Holodeck, with our other, with our ES titles to uh, to keep playing. Street game is perfect for that. It's positioned in the competitive marketplace on being easy to play, even for non-gamblers, as I mentioned. Prize money being available to players based on building successful streaks, and Fan Freak has users building those streaks and, and keeping them alive to win. Keeping them alive is a really important part of Fan Freak. Simple, and like Holodeck, you're gonna use it every day. So I, I, I think that not all investors realize how apps make money. It's it maybe a, a mystery. It's not, it's, it's really not uh, that mysterious. Um, it's maybe more multifaceted than some people think. So I talked about how eSports e titles, our ES titles, earn dollars through real money gaming. There's ads. I think those are, those are probably pretty straightforward. In-app purchase of skins and digital wearables. Uh, a lot of people who have a, a, a kid in their family, a, you know, a child that's playing Fortnite, understand Fortnite's a completely free game and people are just buying digital wearables in those games. Level upgrades and other valuable tools. We've got those in all of our, our, uh, our games and apps. I also talked about NFTs as a source of revenue, that limited edition kind of notion and being interoperable between NFT marketplaces and in-app marketplaces. 
we hope to be able to announce big moves soon with the subscription fees I talked about with Holodeck and also registration fees with Holodeck. Um, so that, that's kind of two new that aren't even on this uh, summary chart uh, revenue sources. And um, we hope we'll be able to announce our plans there and, and the details uh, very, very soon. And Fan Freak, of course, will focus attention on gambling. But our job right now is to get downloads and then turn downloads into dollars. And we can demonstrate how this works. If anybody wants to know, I love talking about this, but mobile games are simply like any other business. What's the customer acquisition cost? How much do you make off of each customer? Our margins are over 80%, so it's really simply putting a hand on a crank, moving that wheel once all the tech and marketing place, partners are in place. That, that, that piece, putting tech and marketing partners in place, is not simple, um, but we've done that. And that's where we are now with 11 titles now, more coming. Our, uh, those 11 titles are already in the App Store. I hope that was a good overview. Yeah, that was that was amazing. I mean, you're you're involved in so many verticals. So, I mean, there's a lot to unpack. Um, let's start with um, with Fan Freak, I think, because it's 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 fresh. So, you know, we, we see um, e -game, like mobile gambling and esports gambling and all that kind of stuff really starting to to get hot as the United States opens up legislation in Canada. Um, so, what do you like? What, what do you think you can take this to? Like, what, like, are you are you going to be involved in like regular sports, like esports, like pretty much? Are you applying it to everything, or are yeah, you just kind of limiting it yourself? Right. So we um we have we've been working with sports and sports data feeds for uh, probably over a decade. Mm -hmm. um, I have to think about that a little bit. Uh, we did uh, World Cups, uh, stuff for Intel in, in sports, and so. Um, having access to those data feeds opens up some some possibility of you know what you know what do you do with that data so mm -hmm. gambling is is one of the things um making something available to a non-gambler and i think this is one of the one of the things there's a, a, a the sports innovation lab out of boston run by a, a ex hockey player um olympic hockey player um talks about the fluid fan and the fluid fan is is really really important during pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. uh, not all fans are gamblers, and if you're doubling down on just the gambling audience, you're going to be competing for just the gambling audience. Um, and so, very very important to us to say, well, let's make these games accessible. Let's make them fun for others. Um, and and that's the approach with Fan Freak. It's got a number of games built within it. The, the core experience is is the streak game. Anybody can play it. Um, there, of course, it, there's an advantage to people that know their sports better, um, but there's no disadvantage in that you have to put money on the line before you start playing. You can just start playing. No money has to be put on the line, basically, until you need to buy a life, to extend a streak, to buy a life, uh, as uh, I think it was Regis Philbin always said on uh, on the. I can't remember the name of the show uh, with the big wheel. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. I think, you know, when I, when I think about gaming in general and where these gaming companies have, you know, shifted their focus to make money, it's on the casual gamer. So I like how you're kind of taking gambling um, and moving that to the casual side of things, because I think that's really an untapped kind of market and really where the money is. And you look at, like you said, Fortnite and even League of Legends, like how do they make their money? It's off of people buying skins. It's the casual gamer that want to be like the pros that they're watching. Right. So yeah. I mean, yeah. it's that's where you know where, where these companies make their money. So when you shift that focus to the casual gamer, that's you know that's a bigger market than like the pro side, where you know, like you said, like the, the main gamblers that are involved. And it's such a heavily competitive market. If you open that up to the casual, that's kind of you know expanding that market like tenfold, basically. I, I think is that kind of like a correct? Yeah, assumption? absolutely, absolutely. And esports kind of layers on top of of, of that point you just made. And so mm -hmm. you, you you take esports, and one of the things. I often uh, say is um, all the people in the stands, which has been none at an NFL game really in the last little while, or few, um, all the people watching those NFL games, uh, sometimes hundreds of million, or you know, just over 100 million, lately a little under 100 million, a Super Bowl. Um, none of those people are going out to play football the next day. Like, like of, of 98 million or 88 million, however many people watch the Super Bowl, I said, zero. <laughs> Okay, not quite zero. <laughs> We're going out to play a football game the next day. And that's where esports is different. Uh, mm -hmm. That's where casual games, that's where accessible games, that's where um, this approach is really, really important to us. 
is why are we watching these things? Why are we participating in these things? It's, it's because we might want to improve our skills. There's an educational mandate almost to these things. Yes. And sports has that accessibility. I mean, not to everybody, but anybody who's watching is probably also a player. And there's so many people playing. It makes there's like so many more people playing, um, you know, Fortnite than watch than playing football. I mean, you know, from flag up, <laughs> yeah. so many more people. There's so many potential for viewers and that casual viewer and they and listen they may not be gamblers and so we need to capture them too yeah no that's an incredible point they they make there like with esports i mean that that's like spot on like people watch esports because they want to see how the pros and all that are doing it so that they can mimic it when they go go and play i mean that's that, that's probably the best esports uh comment I, i've heard in, in a while like I, I never even really thought of it myself even though i'm an esports kind of person but i mean yeah that's that's exactly right so a massive number of players yeah um needs to grow into a massive number of viewers and then yeah. you know people that engage with through mm -hmm. through these apps and so on um and uh and and, and of course uh it's it, you flip it upside down especially with the nfl i mean there's other sports where you don't flip it it's not as graphic but you yeah. know listen there's there's not a lot of us playing watching football to make our game better tomorrow right <laughs> Um, Sean, do you have any any uh, questions? Or I, could go yeah, I was I was going to ask a technical question, uh, but it, because when it comes to user sort of um, comp user based companies, the way we value them is based on you know the cost of user acquisition, and the good thing about gaming is as this industry is um, you know gaining more popularity uh, among the youth, and we're going through that demographic change as well, which is very important, I think is that I believe your cost of user acquisition will be declining as you expand very quickly, as the market is also expanding. And uh, just I just wanted to get your opinion on that. And I believe maybe your revenue per user will also be rising. Is that a combination that you would see in the next, in the near future? Yeah, so so both. So we're focused mostly on the download right now. So the, the, the CAC, the customer uh, customer acquisition costs. So that, that's very, very important to us currently. Um, and, uh, and and switching in over to revenue priorities uh, later. And so one of the reasons you'll see that is is um, not all of our games have revenue fully turned on yet. So we don't have ad ads turned on in all of our games yet. So that's all a process that's going on right now. Um, and, but the priority is on, on the downloads. And what we discovered through a bunch of A-B testing over the last several months, really over a pandemic, um, is that uh, cost per download go down a, a huge amount. And I, I don't want to give away, because there might be other mobile game developers, uh, other advertisers that are going to steal this. Uh, I don't want to give away, but it's, it's, it's like really obvious uh, to anybody who's watching this space really clearly. It has nothing to do with what we've done. It has everything to do with huge global forces and and companies and and and, co and comp competition at that level. CAC, like CAC is down a dollar from our very, very best in A-B tests um, just two months ago um, and down $4 from October, November, you could, like the election time period, right? Um, where people were spending massive amounts of money on digital ads, it, it down four dollars uh, since that time period. So, so it's a wonderful opportunity to be positioned like we are to market eleven SKUs uh, that we have in the marketplace. I, I, you know, I wish we had more, but it, it's actually kind of complicated to to do all this stuff with with eleven. Um, so, so we'll, we'll keep adding and uh, and focus on uh, on those downloads and then and then revenue immediately after. Because as soon as you have a download, you've got an opportunity for revenue. But before you have a download, you have no opportunity for revenue in this business in the business that, that we're running. Yeah, Trevor, what's your timeline for, you know, having enough downloads to start generating revenue? Is it perhaps... You'll, you'll, um, you'll start hearing that. Uh, I, we're gonna, I think we'll have some news next week. I, I'll break it here with you guys on uh, yeah. on the percent increase. It, it's going super well. And because CAC is so low, it's like, okay, what? Let's just let's keep going. Um, and we've got complimentary things going on. Um, how he's got his brand new podcast. Uh, he's nice. doing the, the media uh, tour um, and, uh, and 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 just you know, an early access program that we're going to launch with the running app, the Holodeck. Um, all things that are um, like designed to take advantage of this 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 moment um, that hopefully will last for a good long time, but uh, exists today in in getting downloads. Um, so we'll turn that into revenue overnight in some cases, but in massive revenue will will take a bit of will take a bit of time. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Um, 
just getting onto the the hollow deck. I know you can't, you didn't, you can't really talk much about it. But is there kind of like a timeline for that? Do you think, and when it'll be going? And I know nope. you announced a Danielle no uh, announced. There is a timeline. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> There's a very, it's an awesome, it's a fun, exciting. We got uh, a lot of things uh, to do, but no timeline announced. And um, um, it just, just keep watching for public stuff. I'm trying to remember all the public stuff we said. We just announced yesterday, uh, or maybe today. It was today, I think. Uh, da Danielle Quiroki with. Um, uh, outside magazine mm -hmm. uh, she was former nike run club um and uh former uh, matt my matt my fitness matt my run you know that uh, franchise um and uh just fantastic stuff coming and uh we'll roll it all out there's some competitive stuff we're holding back um and just some great partners that we are, are trying to sign up um so that we can announce it to the marketplace with as much oomph as we can uh, to investors, we've been hinting about it simply because um, we felt like it was important to let them know we're up to something, um, mm -hmm. even though we want to keep, we really don't want to <laughs> let much of the marketplace know what's going on here, but we thought we really need to do that with investors. And we really amped that up in the last little while in, in hopes to um, keep them up to date on something that they might feel, geez, why aren't these people talking about it more? And it's because we're... We've got to ink a couple of things to make it awesome. We don't have to ink a couple of things to launch it. We have an ink a couple of things to to launch it awesomely, and that's that's what we're doing. Awesome. Yeah, it, it looks really interesting. I mean, you know, health and fitness is you know going to be like a you know an even more focal point moving forward in our society out, coming out of this pandemic. I think people are going to want to take more action with their health and you know providing an immersive experience like what this looks like it's going to be um you know only helps people be more active and and, and involved with it right so i think you know without giving, too many, detail, yeah. without giving too many details i kind of see where it's going and uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it's like it, it's a great application of technology sometimes like what's going to break um a certain type of technology out um, like okay so let's say augmented reality or a pair of glasses or or a vr headset or or whatever's next right what's going to break it out and and a lot of us have a, a, a you know a trope that we always go to you know well, you know when this industry does it it's it the health and fitness industry is a great match for a, for a lot of what we've been waiting to break out um whether it's vr AR um, and and uh, you know the pandemic pushed this pushes these things along. It, it created a brand new behavior, which really this came out of. But I'll, I'll give you some just some quick history. Um, How you go viral? We were going to launch it April 2020. March 2020, we went into lockdown. So uh, we were going to launch it on in, in in April on the Ellen Show, uh, April 19th, I think it was scheduled. Ellen went in hiatus, I think March. 13th or something. So, so that was dead and closed. We took a whole different approach to, to that, a charity driven approach first, PPE, raising money for PPE until that became too political. Um, and, and, but one of the things our games had was a game mechanic that forced people outside right. when we were being told to stay home. So we had to change our game mechanic overnight and and push that out if we didn't if we had no way to change it i wondered why we were even in business to be honest so we changed our game mechanic um and it, it was immediately um the vision for holodeck um and that's exactly where it came from and and within that same time period a brand new sport was being created called virtual racing or virtual running wow. um, and it's it's 100 million dollars uh, hundreds of millions of dollars this year um in the virtual running space a thing that didn't exist in 2019 um, and it's just a habit people are hooked on. Not everybody loves it because they prefer to run a physical race. And what we're building will allow them to do both. And it's really, really fun and awesome. And uh, it, it'll it'll be um, you'll keep hearing news uh, come out. Uh, we, we'll save something special just to just to we're doing an early access program. We're going to announce this. And so um, maybe we should do an investors group early access program. Let's do investors go running. We'll do 205. When does market close a mountain time? Uh, 205, what, you know, five minutes after market close, everybody be ready on the start line and we'll do something real special and we'll have a, a special group and, and we can do that in the, in the coming weeks and, and we can lead it here at, at stock Fam. get, yeah. get everybody out running uh, post pandemic. That sounds good. I know Sean's an avid runner. So.
<laughs> Sounds I lovely. Yeah. We can't have people mar running during market, right? We have, we got to, you know, <laughs> people be Not running into sure. things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hammy, do you have any final questions? No, I think, um, you know, I enjoy the presentation is great. I mean, you have so many different verticals to generate revenue from, which is, you know, something that we look for. I mean, you know, yourself, you're a great manager. It looks like you have a vision and, you know, that's important. Um, you know, lots of exciting things coming up in the pipeline. Um, so I think investors have a reason to be really excited, you know, just the holodeck, like if we were just talking about the holodeck alone and, you know, that development that, you know, that would be exciting enough, but then we have all your, your mobile yeah. games and then fan freak. I mean, there's just so many things to look forward to. So, um, you know, I hope investors kind of take notice to all this and really, you know, kind of understand where you're kind of going, uh, into the future with, with ePlay. And, you know, I, I'm excited as, you know, myself That's just crazy. listening to all this stuff so yeah we'll keep the hand on the on the crank I, I, I always say hand on the wheel but i think it's the crank that moves the wheel so, so we'll keep our hand on the crank not the wheel <laughs> anyways trevor thank you so much really appreciate thank your time you. and thank you very much to everyone who tuned in um we'll see you all in the next one cheers yes